Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Economics Design Podcast. Today, I'm excited to be joined by our guest, Chris, from Token Engineering Labs. Thanks for joining me, Chris. Hi, uh, thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to, to talk to you guys today. So do you want to give us a quick intro about yourself and what you're building at Token Engineering Labs? Yeah, sure. So hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm based in Vienna. I'm the founder of Token Engineering Labs. We are a company that designs token systems. And I've been doing this for the last uh, five, six years now. I started doing this because I wanted to build a token system by my own uh, at some point. And eventually I found out that I don't know, but also no one in the space knows how to properly build token systems, how to design token economies, how to, you know, um, parameterize your token economy, how to build the mechanisms that you want to have. So this is why I decided to go the um, academic way and start a PhD in this area mm. and then now um, after my PhD is you know about to be concluded and eventually soon um, I am in the lucky position to be able to continue working in a space and this is what the token engineering labs is doing token engineering labs is both the com company but also a community so we are we have we have uh, client projects but also we do community work Interesting. So you mentioned there you're completing your PhD how many people have completed a PhD before in crypto economics? I know of actually one person or actually two people. I know two people that have completed uh, this. One, uh, one colleague of mine from the ETH in Zurich and uh, one other colleague from the VU uh, University with whom I was studying in, in Vienna, actually. So I know of two, but I, I'm not sure if there are um, you know, similar programs around the world somewhere uh, that could uh, be classified as you know, token engineering or crypto economic programs. So I know that there are many institutions, many universities who fo which focus on, to some extent, extent at different, you know, crypto areas or Web3 areas or blockchain uh, based education systems, right? So stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but um, I, I don't know uh, if they would call the, their program crypto economic or token engineering. They rather would not, I guess, but this will, this will happen in the future uh, mm -hmm. pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. And like complex systems engineering, for example, is a term that's used intertwined with token engineering, I believe. Um, so, so similar processes there. Um, so why don't you share a little bit about how your PhD route has um, brought you into the role that you're currently doing with Token Engineering Labs? And um, when did you kind of decide that token, uh, token engineering or crypto economics was what you wanted to focus on for your career? Yeah, so this goes a bit backwards to the time when I started uh, thinking about token systems. So, um, you know, I have a background in mathematics, so my formal education is um, mathematics. And mm -hmm. um, I've been working in banking and finance uh, after I completed my master's. But um, for some reason, I get the ch I got the chance at some point to... Um, to explore crypto systems and crypto economies for six months. And I was uh, basically thinking about my own token system at this, at this point in time. And what I found is that most of the things that are you know, being used or are about to be used in the design and in implementation of those systems is uh, something that resonates quite a bit with what I've been uh, learning at university when I was studying back then. And um, this is why I um, I decided that hey this is uh, has actually a lot of uh, things in common with what I was doing in the past what I you know like so much about mathematics what I like so much about um, crypto economics and then token engineering and, and and crypto stuff but also about complex and dynamic systems but haven't got to use um, in in practice in banking and finance so this is why I decided to take this road and I decided to find out and then I met I met some amazing people in the space uh, very early on who helped helped me or help who like who were just you know like contributing to the to the space of, of token engineering and crypto economics and uh, they had um, a major impact on how i'm thinking about the, the these things and and uh, which route i to, uh, took in in the design and um, of my phd curriculum mm -hmm. so i want to do two things next i want to firstly we'll get into a little bit of a discussion about what the heck crypto economics is uh, but before we do that i want to talk on one point um which is the idea that crypto economics and cryptocurrencies are a fad. You know, this was a point in 2018, 2019, that was pretty popular. People weren't sure if crypto was here to stay or not. Um, so for people who, you know, know a little bit about cryptocurrencies, for people who maybe understand a little bit of economics, um, you know, why is this an emerging field that's going to continue to grow over the next 10 years? Mm. I mean, obviously, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of, of this field because I've uh, put everything at stake at, at, uh, you know, like and decided to go for full full crypto at some point. But uh, I did this because I um, I 
I trusted my understanding of, of the field. So I trusted that what I see happening and what I, uh, what I see people doing is in line what, um, what, makes, uh, what makes sense uh, in applications, but also in theory and in, 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 in practice, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so this is why um, it, it has so, so, so many benefits uh, over, I mean, coming from the traditional banking system, you know, there is no comparison, right? So like, so what you do in crypto is obviously much, much more efficient and, and much more streamlined and much more practical uh, to conduct, you know, transactions or to conduct, um, you know, um, economic activities uh, compared to all of the other uh, digital banking um, applications that you would need to use in order to, to do the same thing in the traditional way. Uh, but um, it has so many arguments. It has uh, the argument that, uh, that you can utilize all of the data Data that you that you have at your disposal and build robust uh, systems. That all of the data that you have is transparent, so you can rely on the mechanisms that you uh, that you're building that they will fulfill what they are supposed to do because they are transparent and they are you know rigorously designed and they, they are taking everything into account. You you cannot hide information from those mechanisms and and so on and so on. So um, it's basically uh, with all of the um, features that it has, it has so many it has so many arguments for that is. It is improving, improving um, on 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 any on on, on every scale uh, what the traditional system and systems are doing. So um, so this is one of the things that you can uh, one of the ways that we can think about uh, why crypto is, is so is is here to stay because it you know it automates a lot of stuff, it improves a lot of stuff, it uh, makes things more robust. We mm -hmm. are able to design things properly and take all of the data and information that we have into account before we design the mechanism. So this is amazing. And Another indicator of why crypto is, is good and why it is meant to stay is you simply have to follow uh, where people are going, right? Like so, the, so the, the smartest minds and like the, the best uh, people in their field are transitioning to crypto. So this is this itself is an indicator of um, of uh, okay, there has to be something to it because um, it, there is not a chance that so many smart people are, are, are making this mistake and, and making this this wrong evaluation of of the promises and and, and benefits of of. of, of crypto and web three. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is also in line with not only smart people, but also with capital, right? You see that capital allocation and, and investments that go into the space. Um, so those are just, you know, signals uh, for me that, that make me believe that I'm on the right path. Um, obviously still, uh, you know, like uh, being at the very early stage of, 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 um, of the field mm -hmm. and just exploring what it's up to bring. So like, I, I'm not even in the position to, to say why it's good or bad, because I, I don't, I understand so little about um, what crypto actually really is, because there is so much to explore. Uh, but um, from what I know, from what I've what, I, what I've seen, um, I could I, I can tell that it's definitely something that is um, is um, improving um, the ways the, how we conduct business of, over the internet or digital yeah. communication or you know like just transaction spaces um, in the digital world. So this is very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's talk about crypto economics. Um, do you want to tell us? like a high level overview, a quick summary. What is crypto economics? You know, why is crypto economics important? Yeah, crypto economics is basically the synthesis of uh, economics and engineering. So um, it um, uses the concept of I want to find out why systems work in a particular way or why uh, people behave in a particular way or wh why um, uh, resources are being allocated in a particular way in an economic uh, setting. So this mm -hmm. is the, the economic part of it um, compared to um, um, aligned with, um, OK, on the other hand, you have all of the data and all of the um, information that is, um, you know, digital um, available and you can therefore plug them in into your um, data analytics, but also into your mechanism design. So uh, this allows you to build robust mechanisms, applying robust methodologies from engineering science and, and those domains, uh, things that have not been able and to be used in economics so far, right? So when you look at, for example, how traditional banking system works, you would see that um, the central bank operates with a delay of eight quarters. So like they take into account all of the information they gather and then they make policies based on uh, what they see. And uh, until those policies have an impact, it takes, you know, up to two years so that, you know, the economy is 
controlled to an extent, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And and this is a huge latency in in the in the in the, in the working because both the data is not available, but also the the methodology that they are applying is not that robust, right? Because it's not a digitalized uh, trustworthy system they're operating in. And this is basically how you could uh, compare to a crypto economy where you would have all of the information at your disposal and w- when you would be able to uh, apply, you know, this heavy machinery and and try to make um, try to make uh, sound and quick and reasonable decisions, basically reacting much quicker and much more targeted to what you want to achieve with the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And I'm curious, on the topic of crypto economics, um, my perception of certain subject areas is that typically industry is ahead of the academics, right? That typically academia is catching up scientific journals or catching up with information. Uh, what's your experience on the topic of crypto economics? Is this being led by academics or is this being led by industry? Both. So, so you see, um, it started obviously by industry. So, like, it, you had like the, those people who wanted to build systems, mostly software developers who were just, you know, like implementing their stuff because they understood what they are building, right? So, they uh, understood uh, coding, they understood uh, software development, and they prototyped pretty quickly things that were functional, right? So, um, it was very easy, and um, it, it was very easy to see that uh, the industry developed or pioneered with respect to some of the applications, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, um, this is uh, uh, only you know like so so good until you find out that things are maybe not uh, thought through till the end, right? So that there are attack vectors or that there are implications that are not foreseen, and and therefore the system doesn't work as it is uh, it, it it was initially intended to work. So. Once you start talking about system critical infrastructure, so you know the financial system or financial applications or um, you know a currency or a unit of of of, um, of exchange, and then uh, you would want to make sure that you have um, properly built and designed systems. So this means that uh, at this stage it would be good if you are not you know trying to lead by industry, but you would try to lead by academia, right? So you would try to research and you would try to validate your mechanisms or your systems before you make them operational in practice and many people and all the whole community whole society relies on them so so this is basically uh, saying that um, uh, yeah it started basically by a push of, of industry but then you saw in industry um, acad- um, academic players uh, catch up and what I um, what I see happening now more and more and this is so awesome is that you have um, you know the, um, academia and industry team up so the pioneers in the space are not only building new systems but they are also uh, working with uh, with top-notch uh, people from academia to make sure that they have, you know, research departments that they have, uh, um, they have properly, you know, like the, um, modeled systems and and uh, designed before they go live. So it is um, it is now a partnership, I would say, but it definitely started with a push from the industry and then academia caught up. But you have to remember that um, uh, the academic uh, research and uh, p- publication process is very is very rigorous, right? So yeah. you need some t- you need some time in, in, in uh, up until you get um, you know scientific statements or scientific results so it, it takes some time until you can say okay yeah this is the consequence of this design and crypto was so quick the, um, in, the, in the last years that no one wanted to wait for you know two three years until something was peer-reviewed and published and discussed and until it was implemented so I think that that, that there is um, a lot of room um, for improvement in the space for projects actually to to, um, to you know have a bit, little bit more patience to see uh, before they really build something and go live with the system uh, to have it properly designed and validated um, and that, so that they make, sh- make sure that it simply works. So, so this would be the goal, right? Yeah. And something I think that's particularly interesting about the field of crypto economics, and this is true for certain fields, but I think also this one specifically, is you can come from a computer science background and more or less become a crypto economist just because of like how significant of a role computer science and data science plays with blockchain technology. like. Programming in Solidity or in REST, developing smart contracts, all heavily ties to designing systems in the context of uh, cryptocurrencies and crypto economics. Uh, so it's a very diverse field. As you mentioned, you have a mathematics background, people have economics background, and are all kind of collectively coming together and and solving this problem or, or solving these problems and furthering the field, which I think is something that's pretty cool. Um, what would you recommend to people who would like to learn a little bit more about crypto economics who don't necessarily, who maybe let's say have a little bit of background economics, um, but don't have a formal education by any means um, in that field. 
Okay, so to, to, to answer here, so like if you really don't have a formal education, but you are heavily interested and you want to work in this space, just the, the best way to do it is um, start working on a project and acquire the, uh, the education. So you have to, like coming into the space, you have to, you have to uh, accept that you will be learning and you need to, you know, like have some formal methodologies and theories um, and, you know, familiarized because so many things that are happening um, in Web3 are, um, you know, the conversation conversations are being held on, on this, uh, you know, academic research uh, um, level, you need to be able to catch up and, and to follow the discussions, right? So um, once you have an interest, a strong interest in the field, it's good that you have a place to start, but you should, uh, you know, the, choose one, one particular field of your interest and try to deepen your knowledge and try and see how this translates to the project you're currently working on or to the thing that you're trying to develop. And if you do have um, a formal education, so uh, what I see happening in the space is more like like there is someone who is a specialist in one particular area and now wants to do crypto economics or now wants to work on a crypto project, right? And and this is um, obviously um, very nice because uh, th there are already some pre prerequisites that they can mm -hmm. start from. And, and, uh, and the goal would be to... Um, start an interdisciplinary approach. So like uh, based on the foundations that you have from this one domain, try to learn as much as possible from the other domains so that you are connected and understand what they're talking about because on the project team or on the, um, in the field, you will be working with experts in the other areas and in the other domains and you need to be able to communicate between them. So you would consider yourself to be you know, a specialist in one particular domain, in one particular direction, but you mm -hmm. would want to um, to be able to work interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary. So, so this would be then your target. So, what I'm actually saying is never stop learning. Uh, you know, like find interest in learning new stuff, uh, but uh, don't discard uh, scientific uh, methodologies because they are there for a reason, and and those things and um, you know are valid uh, for quite some some time already. So, so, so it's good to keep them in mind and just you know deepen your own understanding about one field and and try to utilize what you know and and apply it to practice mm -hmm. so so on the subject of learning do you want to share a little bit about what your phd was in yeah so obviously i mean like coming into the space five years ago it was very difficult to have uh, um have a comfortable position in the sense there was no proper you know like uh, there was no proper program there was no proper um, um even publication venue there was no proper um let's say a mentor or no proper you know like no one whom you could turn to and say hey this is what you need to do in order to be an expert in crypto economics in five years because yeah. um because the field was so new and no one knew actually what to what to do and want what to publish, what to research. And this is obviously even harder if you are in the PhD um, program when you are supposed to follow one particular track, right? So the idea of the PhD program is to become an expert in one field and, you know, get acquainted with uh, the theories and methodologies in this field and go to conferences and meet people from this field. But this was so diverse and so, so challenging to achieve and, and so challenging to pin down. So what I then decided to do is I decided to split my time between working and, and in academia and working in practice so um, I was uh, I was consistently um, working on projects uh, uh, on applied projects so that I get the first-hand experience of you know which problems uh, projects are trying to solve and how um, uh, interesting questions can be derived from that but also I was working um, with uh, with experts in, in academia and at my university the Vienna University of Economics uh, where um, I was trying to um, to understand people who are you know like uh, scientists for 20 years already and uh, the, the advice that they, they've been giving me um, in order how to tackle problems. So again, synthesizing practice and, and theory a bit. And what I've th then chosen to do is to write uh, different papers on different um, problems in um, in. in in the space between you know game theory and mechanism design, so so how to how to build systems, how to design mechanisms, how to find solutions to 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 economic problems, um, both on the layer one. So um, for example, I wrote a paper about Bitcoin pool mining. So how to build mechanisms so that uh, um, miners are incentivized not to uh, um, attack the other pool. Uh, and how you know this system can be improved but also i was working a bit uh, in defi on the amm space how to design you know decentralized exchanges how to how to talk about different um, um structures of those of those um um, systems and how to um, uh, de define mechanisms such for such as for example fee mechanisms in this context and so on and so on. So now transitioning more into uh, metaverse and gaming applications, uh, basically following the field. 
for trying to to pr contribute to the to the crypto community in an academic fashion where the current discussion is also as well mm -hmm. yeah what i think is cool about the crypto space is um you, you see a lot of people from different backgrounds all kind of solving problems collectively and I, when i read for example mastering ethereum uh, when I read the story of how Ethereum was built and, and and everything that followed, it was very cool. It's a very interesting discovery. The way it kind of was created was interesting. The way that it continuously is developed um, is even more interesting. And lots of the time when I'm speaking to people who don't know a whole lot about cryptocurrencies or crypto economics for that matter, um, one of the selling points I'd like to say is it's an innovation created by, in a lot of senses, very bright minds in computer science and data science, as well as some ties to finance. And after realizing that, it's really a te technological innovation. I mean, blockchain is discussed a lot, but unfortunately, there's a lot of scams associated with it as well. Uh, it becomes very, it becomes very important for people like you and I to express this point that this is a very cool piece of technology that, as you had mentioned, the smartest people are working with and are continuing to build even further through decentralized applications, through studying economic theories that are tied back to you know instantiating cryptocurrencies into a project. So a bunch of very cool things happening in the crypto space, um, and these and that's part of the reason that I actually actively got involved in this because I saw this as a very cool opportunity um, to get a little bit more on the ground floor and associate myself with some of these projects and learn, learn about crypto economics and, and building some of these system designs. So Chris, to finish off the podcast for today, last question, um, do you have any hot takes you would like to share about crypto economics or the crypto space in general, or have any uh, recommendations or feedback for people? I mean, so what passionates me uh, most is that we are actually, actually at a very early stage. So so I, I'm super excited every, every day when I wake up uh, to say, OK, uh, I know that I'm going to learn something new and I'm going to push this the understanding a little bit further. But uh, by, you know, like uh, in, in developing new ideas, we also open up the new uh, unknown. Right. So we are um, continuously, you know, expanding the space and expanding our understanding. But what I um, what I really see like uh, happening, uh, seeing happening uh, currently is that uh, people are strongly collaborating, that people are strongly sharing ideas, that it's such a supportive community and that, uh, you know, like you get to to collaborate with people from all around the world who really, mm -hmm. really, really want to uh, to um, to build something new and something um, something exciting. And there is no, you know, this uh, this um, idea of you know like uh, you know like developing things um, in in the back and not sharing your thoughts because everyone knows that it's only good to be open and and uh, and um, and supportive to each other because uh, uh, as a collaborative space we can we can develop uh, new things. Uh, much more efficiently so mm -hmm. so this is what i appreciate a lot a lot so basically this would be a call for action to everyone just you know like join your most favorite dao just uh, try to you know um uh, contribute there just um uh, make sure that you are learning a lot and make sure that you bring in your expertise and knowledge from your previous life into crypto and and hopefully we can we can do something great together Perfect. Sounds sounds great. And I would be happy to have you on another episode where we get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty of crypto economics for those who like to get into those details. Uh, so that said, thanks for joining me on the podcast, Chris. It was great to have you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye.